The Wisconsin Badgers and Illinois Fighting Illini enter this weekend on similar paths. Wisconsin has lost six of its eight last games. Illinois has won six of its eight last games. But I think there's more similarities to these team right now that meets the eye by just looking at the win and loss column. And that's something we got. We got to break down here on the Scotty six pack podcast. Good morning. And thank you for enjoying it with a six pack. The Scotty six pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter at Kedrick Stumbrus and follow the podcast at Scotty six pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. This is March. We have made it. We have made it to the greatest month of the year. NCAA tournament. Before that, conference tournaments. Very, very, very soon. Conference tournaments. You have NCAA hockey playoff action. Really, really after the NCAA tournament wraps. We're in the thick of NBA season. Baseball season. It's all coming. Baseball season starts before the NCAA tournament ends. It, it's right here. It is, it is one of the best times of the year to be to be a sports fan. March is so, so, so fun. Uh, and I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Chrissy Birdsall over with uh, BTN Plus, with WSUM. Give, give a reminder for Badger fans of just everything, everything, everything that's going on. In Madison, Friday, women's hockey, St. Thomas, WCHA quarterfinals. Men's hockey takes on Michigan State in the Cole Center. Saturday, men's basketball against Illinois in the Cole Center. Women's hockey against St. Thomas at Lebon Arena. Men's hockey against Michigan State in the Cole Center again. Just go, go a little whip around back and forth between the Cole Center and Lebon back and forth all that day as Wisconsin tries to win the Big Ten title. In, in men's hockey, then Sunday you get women's basketball against Michigan State, and then maybe, maybe a third game against St. Thomas for the women's hockey team. This is this is March. Thank you, Chrissy Birdsall. Great follow uh, for all things Wisconsin sports, as always. But we got to talk about this number one priority for the men's basketball team in front of it, which is just win the next game, because that is something this Wisconsin men's basketball team has failed to do so often as of late and in large part that is because of the defensive failures of this wisconsin badgers basketball team like i said on our show immediately after the indiana loss the indiana disaster i try to record these episodes after taking a little bit of time away from the game 20 minutes an hour whatever it is to regroup my thoughts and, and maybe get a little bit less frustrated, a little bit less emotional, a little less worked up. The more I sit with this loss to Indiana, the more I find myself just extraordinarily concerned with the direction of this Wisconsin Badgers men's basketball team right now. And it comes at a time where Wisconsin has to play a juggernaut of an offensive team in Illinois. Right now, at Ken Palm, Illinois is the 13th overall team in the country by just an efficiency margin. Wisconsin is 23rd. If you head on over to BartTorvik.com, Wisconsin is 25th in the country by just an efficiency margin. Illinois is 15th in the country. So both of them just two slots lower. But what's really interesting is if you look at the trajectory of these teams as of late. Wisconsin, 25th in the country right now. 17th in offense, 57th in defense. Illinois, 15th in the country, 4th in offense, 105th in defense. That defense significantly worse than Wisconsin's. Now, of course, the offense operating at a tier above Wisconsin's right now, to, to be certain. And, and we're going to dig into that a little bit. In the back half of the show, talking about the key matchups in this game. But if you... Sort the data at barttorvik.com and just look at the teams from February 7th to today. February 7th being the day that Wisconsin took that loss in Ann Arbor to the Michigan Wolverines. Wisconsin falls from 25th 
all the way down to 92nd in the country. Its offense falls from 17th on the season to 82nd since February 7th. Since February 7th, Wisconsin has the 115th ranked defense in the country by adjusted defense, according to BartTorvik.com, down from 57th on the season. Illinois, similarly, 15th in the country right now, but if you just look at February 7th forward, at 27th. Now, this is where the difference starts to come into play. Since February 7th, Illinois has the number one offense in the country by adjusted offense. On defense, Illinois has the 298th ranked defense in the country since February 7th, an abysmal showing for, for what it's worth. Since February 7th, uh, Nebraska is the 11th best team in the country, <laughs> according to Bart Torvik. Um, but these margins shouldn't necessarily come as a surprise, right? That's a lot of numbers. Let, let's contextualize it a little bit. Illinois' defense has not been up to par. And if you just want to look at individual data points, just taking the last few games Illinois has played. In the last four games Illinois has played, Illinois has given up 97 points, 85 points, 90 points, and 80 points. Even if you leave out the game immediately preceding that, in a win over Michigan, Illinois gave up 68 points, but then 80 to, 88 to Michigan State right before that. It's not great. Not great defense coming out of the Illini. Of course, Wisconsin not playing great defense either, and it is such a paradigm shift for both of these programs. Illinois and Wisconsin, under Brad Underwood and Greg Gard respectively, have been defense-first teams. Th these two teams have been characterized by solid defense that can steal a game and by offenses that are you know, steady and reliable for the most part, absent some cold streaks here and there. Last time these two teams played in January of last year, the final score was 61-51. Look, I'm not saying these two teams are going to double that score, but it's going to be well above that 100, 112 points there. Yeah. I was trying to figure out if I remembered how to do math there for a second. The last time these two teams played, the score at halftime was 20 to 16. Wisconsin shot six for 33 in the first half. That's not what's going to happen here. These, these two teams are so fundamentally different from what it was a year ago. 20 to 16 at halftime the last time these two teams played, and now they have just abysmal defenses. Oh, my goodness. And it's not that these two teams give up defense in the same kind of ways. Part of Illinois' defensive problems is that Illinois just does not force any turnovers. On the season, Illinois is 359th in the country in turnover percentage. That means there are only three teams worse at forcing turnovers than Illinois. Wisconsin uh, does does great, you know, not, not the best at, at uh, forcing turnovers, but like overall just doesn't, doesn't, doesn't stop shots, period, full stop. Illinois can you know, get, get some stop shots here, here and there, not in the last couple of weeks, but on, on the season, at least, uh, last couple of weeks, Illinois hasn't looked like anything all year. And if you break down the way that these two teams have regressed uh, of late as a whole for Wisconsin, we talked about the fact that Wisconsin has dr dropped from 25th on the season. And if you just partition that out to February 7th on, Wisconsin drops from 25th in the country to 92nd. There are only 25 teams that have regressed more than Wisconsin compared to how they started down that stretch since February 7th. 
That's not great. On the other hand, Illinois, which has the 105th ranked defense in the country, but 298th ranked since February 7. Illinois has one of the best offensive improvements in the country, to be sure, because since February 7th, Illinois boasts the best offense in the country, but the fourth worst defensive regression since February 7th. Say what you will about this Wisconsin defense. It's not Illinois. <laughs> um, and right now, that isn't saying a lot. But for two coaches in Greg Gard and Brad Underwood, who I think respect each other. They're not coaching teams that I think either one of them are, are very comfortable with. And Wisconsin still plays with a very slow pace. Illinois plays plays with a top 60 pace in the country. It's it's something that w Wisconsin probably is going to find itself falling victim to because this Wisconsin team tends to play quickly with its upbeat opponents. It's, it's not good at forcing teams to slow all the way down and force fast-paced teams into rock fights like Wisconsin teams of old had been able to do for so long. This game at the Cole Center is going to be pointy. And in, in a shootout, I'd probably favor Illinois just because of all that offensive firepower. But it might just come down to who can get a stop. And frankly, I, I don't trust either of these teams to, to be able to get stops. It's going to be very difficult watching these two teams play if you are a fan of, of basketball teams that play defense because I, I don't think there's going to be a lot of it to be found here. Now, who might provide that defense for the Badgers and who the Badgers might be able to capitalize on from the fighting Illini? That is the key question here for how Wisconsin can win this game on Saturday at the Kohl Center. We're going to talk about that next after we tell you about our friends over at TickPick because TickPick is where I get tickets to any sporting event that I like to go to, especially if I'm going to an event at the Kohl Center. Go see some Wisconsin Badgers action this, this Saturday against the Fighting Illini. Should be an excellent one. Should be, I, I mean, a, a fun back-and-forth affair. Points galore, I am sure. And if you're going, you got to go get your tickets on TickPick because TickPick is the best place to get deals on tickets because they charge no fees for any tickets. No service fees, no delivery fees, none of that nonsense that you see on other ticket apps. You're always going to get the best deals on TickPick. I always get the best deal on TickPick. Compare the prices, and if you find a better deal somewhere else, TickPick is going to refund you 110% of the difference in credit toward your next TickPick order. Plus, if you use my link in the podcast description, my link that is on your screen now, you're going to save 10 bucks on your first order on TickPick. What is there to lose? Go to the Cole Center. Go see an awesome Big Ten basketball game between you know two offenses that are that are high flying for sure. Should be phenomenal. Go buy those tickets on TickPick. That's T-I-C-K-P-I-C-K. -I -I Download the app in the Google Play Store, the Apple App Store. Use my link in the podcast description. Save 10 bucks on your first order for concerts, comedy shows, sporting events. And never pay fees for tickets ever again. Uh, coming up this week on the show yet, we got one more day of show. We're going to be talking with one of my favorite bracketologists on the internet tomorrow. Uh, them and I are going to be recording that show later on today. We should be in your feed first thing Saturday morning for you to listen to as a, as a bit of an appetizer for this Wisconsin-Illinois game. And if you're looking for more of an appetizer for the Wisconsin-Illinois game, uh, head on over to Badger Notes. Click the link in the podcast description that has my latest work there. Uh, I got a piece that should be publishing on the site today may be published by the time you are listening to this already um, about the state of Wisconsin basketball, digging into some of those trends I was talking about at the top of the half of the show just a little bit more, um, talking about where Wisconsin goes from here, looking at Wisconsin from a historical perspective, how Wisconsin you know, needs to bounce back and, and what needs to be different for, for Wisconsin to get on the horse here. And getting on the horse here starts, starts with a win over the fighting line. And 
when I look at this fighting Illini roster, one of the things that sticks out to me right away is that they, they do not have a traditional center. Uh, th this is a, a roster that is not very similar to many others in the Big Ten. Uh, if you follow you know, Big Ten basketball over the years, you'll notice Coleman Hawkins is kind of playing. I mean, he is playing a starting center role for, for Illinois this year. And Coleman Hawkins is not a center. He he is a power forward. He's a four. He is not a five. He, he has never been a five. He was not recruited as a center. He was recruited as a power forward. They play small with Coleman Hawkins. Their other option at the five is Dane Danger, and he's small too. Danger has been playing a, a much more limited role this season. Um, part of that, it seems to do, is because of his... He, he has eroded some of that trust, I think, on the defensive end with, with Brad Underwood, but Brad Underwood just has much more trust in Coleman Hawkins running the front court right now for Illinois than he has with Dane Danger. Danger has seen his minutes tick up a little bit in the last couple of games, but really the, the big threat in the front court is Coleman Hawkins. And he's not just a threat in the front court. He's having his best three point shooting season of his career as well. Up 10 percentage points from where it had been in his previous best season. Uh, he's got some real nifty moves just outside of the restricted area. He is a matchup nightmare who can score from anywhere on the court um really a three level scorer just below an 80 percent free throw shooter as well someone that i think is going to be a problem for for this wisconsin team someone that i don't think a stephen crowell starting center for wisconsin really has a ton of experience getting to guard someone like that um someone that i think tyler wall is probably better suited trying to guard and and then of course that leaves you know Quincy Garrier or Luke Good. And I don't know that Stephen Crowell is a great guard for those positions either. It, they're much smaller, probably much quicker laterally than Stephen Crowell is. This quick front court where Wisconsin doesn't really have anybody else who can match up really well with that quick, smaller lineup it is concerning to me. And maybe that means that, you know, a dose of a Marcus Silver, Tyler Wall front court is in store here as Wisconsin tries to figure something out. But I haven't been super pleased with Marcus Silver's performance as of late. I, I do not think in the last couple of games that he's gotten some extended run in lieu of Carter Gilmore. I do not believe that Marcus Silver has tried to get up a single shot from inside the three point arc yet. That's concerning to me if. You know, that's that's the kind of matchup that Wisconsin might might need in this game to to shut down this Illinois front court and court. And by shut down, I mean shut down best you can. This is best offense in the country right now. Like I said, it's very concerning. A couple other guys who make this offense go, of course, is Terrence Shannon. Terrence Shannon is look, got into some legal trouble. Those those court proceedings are ongoing. He's not been convicted of anything. And since he came back to the Illini after you know sitting out with an administrative suspension, he has been coming back full steam still. Uh, absolutely no real change in his play. Gotten his groove very quickly and is an excellent weapon on this team, on this Illinois team. And then you move up one more level and you get to Marcus Domask at, at the point guard position. Marcus Domask, who was a transfer portal target for Greg Gard this offseason out, out of Southern Illinois. And he is a, an excellent scorer in his own right. Uh, not, not a three-point shooter, but someone who can really, really, really drive the hoop. And I, I think that is something that makes this Illinois team so dangerous is that this is a team that drives the hoop really, really, really well. Uh, they have a two-point shooting percentage on the season of 55.1. That is 26th in the country. 
they get to the hoop and they can score. It, it is really impressive what this Illinois team is able to do at driving the ball inside uh, Domask at times being able to kick it out and, and generate some open looks for a guy like Coleman Hawkins, who is a threat to score from anywhere on the floor. It, it is a scary offense to try to defend. Uh, I think that one of the key matchups that Wisconsin might have an advantage in is on the other side of the floor with Marcus Damask because he is not a fantastic defender. Clearly, he is something of a step behind Big Ten competition on that end of the floor. And so a matchup between Marcus Damask and Chucky Hepburn is one that could decide what the you know tenor and tempo of this game looks like because if Marcus Damask tries to do a lot himself as a scorer, he might have a hard time with an excellent defender like Chucky Hepburn. Now on the opposite end of the floor, I think Damask is a more talented individual scorer than Chucky Hepburn is, but that's not to say that Chucky Hepburn does not have that himself. We, we've seen that at times this season. We kind of saw it at, at, against um, against Indiana. Chucky Hepburn played very well, especially when he was driving to the hoop and, and trying to score. If Chucky Hepburn can get by Marcus Domask, who I think is a half step behind a lot of these Big Ten guards that Damask has to defend, that could do a lot for this Wisconsin offense. And, and whether that's Marcus Domask, you know, giving Chucky Hepburn room to drive the lane himself or Chucky Hepburn some some room to facilitate or whether that's from minutes with Max Klesman at the one is the primary ball handler. There, there's a chance that Wisconsin could see a spark by getting by Marcus Domask especially now the, the opposite end of the floor too. talk about Coleman Hawkins, this smaller lineup. You have to get the post players for Wisconsin going. You really, really, really do. Uh, th this, this offense just looks so much better when Steven Crowell is moving, when, when Tyler wall is, is playing especially. And it, it just really, really, really goes without saying how, how much better this Wisconsin offense is when Tyler wall is, is rolling. And that's, what's going to be necessary for Wisconsin to beat an Illinois team that Wisconsin has not beat since 2019. And before that, Wisconsin had what, like a 15 game, uh, winning streak. Yeah. 15 game winning streak over the Illini. And since then, uh, Il Illinois has lost zero of the last six, uh, to Wisconsin. Get Tyler Wall going, get Stephen Crowell going. U use some of the size that Wisconsin has because although Illinois has some decent average height across the board, I think Wisconsin is able to do more with it overall um, in terms of some of these matchups that they could take advantage of, especially from a Stephen Crowell. Again, I think Stephen Crowell might be a little bit limited on on the defensive end, but he he can do more on, on offense in this one, and it will benefit Wisconsin for, for them to be doing so. Another thing Wisconsin needs to take advantage of is limiting turnovers. That's an easy thing to say, an easy thing to point out in any game, of course, but think about it. The top half of the show, we talked about the fact that part of the reason Illinois' defense struggles so much is because it does not force turnovers. It forces fewer turnovers per possession than almost anybody in the country. And now for all the things that came out of the Indiana game that were wrong, one of the things that was right was Wisconsin not turning the ball over. I mean, Chucky Hepburn individually had six assists and zero turnovers. Wisconsin turned the ball over only three times that game, was one of the best games by turnover percentage in, in the big 10 in a very, very, very long time for Wisconsin. Something that the Badgers could take advantage of if they will have a chance to, to win this game, which is going to require some outburst of offense. Uh, I am sure because I, I don't know where else Wisconsin can, can win this one because the defense is lacking. It's playing 
maybe the best offense in the country right now, at least according to some metrics it is. And if there's something else that Wisconsin can get out of this one, it's maybe getting its offense clicking a little bit better than it was before against a defense in Illinois that is looking like one of the worst in the country at this time. Uh, another another thought I have coming into this one is whether or not Kamari McGee is going to be returning. My guess is no, because we haven't heard anything yet. And the initial timeline, or the last timeline we got from Greg Gard would have slated Kamari McGee to return for the game against Indiana, and that didn't happen. So I, I don't know what's going on with Kamari McGee. Uh, certainly would like to see him back, especially if this ends up being a higher possession game, which I think Illinois is going to force it to be. Um, but Kamari McGee being back would be huge for this team. I'm also curious to see if John Blackwell gets some more minutes. And that might come at the expense of AJ Store. Whether that's good or bad, I'm not ready to judge yet. Uh, but if you look at the post game comments from the Indiana game that Greg Gard gave. He was really unafraid to praise John Blackwell and talk about all the things that he does really well instinctively, both on the offensive and defensive ends of the court. While also mentioning that AJ store, you know, is still a bit of work in progress and he always brings up the defense. There's a chance you need a, an AJ store 25 point game to win this one. Uh, there, there, there is a chance. But John Blackwell showed that he ha can create some outbursts of scoring of his own. Show, show that against Indiana just the other night. And pair that with maybe a little bit of better defense. I, I, I don't know. There, there's maybe a case there that for as much of a threat as AJ store is, you, you get away with a little bit of extra John Blackwell in the floor instead, or, or maybe that comes in, in lieu of Max Klesmet minutes who, when he, when he's hot, he's hot, but when he's not, he's not. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see that. I, I will be watching for that. And of course, how Wisconsin handles the front court rotation against a front court that I think is just vastly, vastly different from Wisconsin's uh, should, should be very entertaining. This should be an entertaining game to watch uh, before you watch the game. Highly recommend coming back to the feed to listen, to watch, to our episode tomorrow. A little Wisconsin Bracketology preview here at the very beginning of March. See where Wisconsin is going. And then also read my new piece over at Bachelor Notes that we'll be publishing today about, you know, what, what I think of this state of the Wisconsin basketball program, where it's going to go from here, what needs to improve, what has to change, what Wisconsin has to do to get back to what it was earlier in the season. That was not uh, a team that has fallen to 90 se 92nd in the country, a team that certainly look is going to be an NCAA tournament team, but does not look the picture right now. And uh, of course we'll dig into more of that uh, tomorrow on our bracketology episode, but Thank you for listening to the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. I've been your host, Kedrick Stubbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stubbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. While you're here listening on your podcast platform choice, please leave it a nice review. Five stars, kind comments really, really, really does help out the show. Also, you can watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. And while you're there, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, and smash that bell so you get notified as soon as we put new episodes into your feed. Until we talk to you tomorrow on Wisconsin.